I have two further nominations. On behalf of the nominating committee, for the two three-year terms on the executive committee, I place as a nomination Dean D. Benjamin Barrett of the University of Toledo College of Law and Dean L. Song Richardson of the University of California Irvine School of Law. Thank you, Dean Moran. As no other nominations have been received for these positions, I declare the nominations closed. As this is a motion by committee, there's no need for a second. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it. The elections are affirmed. Thanks very much, Stacey. Uh, it is truly uh, an honor and a delight to be here uh, on this occasion uh, to bestow uh, this year's William L. Prosser <coughs> Award on uh, my friend and colleague, uh, uh, Ken Simons. Um, I want to first begin with a message from uh, Ken's uh, dean at Irvine, uh, L. Song Richardson, who couldn't be here because there's a dean's panel meeting at this exact moment, but she says, uh, I want to congratulate my friend and colleague, Ken Simons, on his receipt of the Prosser Award. Ken is an extraordinary scholar, a tireless institutional citizen, and a remarkable person. We are fortunate to have him here at UCI Law. I am sorry that I cannot be there to celebrate this honor in person, but congratulations, Ken. Thank you. Um, I will say a few more words, but I promise I will be extremely brief. Um, uh, the Prosser Award is uh, about as good as it gets in the domain of torts, um, uh, and Ken is an utterly worthy uh, recipient. He is currently a chancellor's professor of law at the University of California, Irvine. Before that, he was a professor of law and the Honorable Frank R. Kennison Distinguished Scholar in Law at Boston University School of Law. And I can say, uh, honestly, it was a great personal loss and a loss to the uh, Boston intellectual community <laughs> when he left to go to California, one of the sadder days of my time uh, in Boston. Um, uh, as you undoubtedly know, Ken has published influential scholarship concerning a range of topics in tort law and related areas, assumption of risk, contributory negligence, intent, the role of mental states generally, uh, negligence as a moral and legal concept, uh, uh, theories of tort law. Uh, he writes in a way that is at once analytically precise, uh, uh, illuminating, and accessible which is a neat trick that I'm still trying to figure out how to do. Um, uh, in addition to his scholarly work, um, uh, more traditional scholarly work, he's been extremely active in the American Law Institute, um, involved in the uh, restatements of the torts, and in particular as the <coughs> chief reporter of the restatement third of torts, intentional torts to persons provisions. And on that point, um, I just want to uh, say I've worked uh, a lot with Ken, I've probably annoyed Ken a great deal um, uh, in this capacity, sending him long uh, emails about the right way to think about battery or what have you, and he has been unfailingly uh, serious, charitable, and uh, engaging in just the way you would want someone in the role of a reporter to be, so he's truly a model uh, in that regard. Um, uh, I could go on and on, I won't. Um, he's a tremendous and beloved teacher uh, at Irvine. Um, he is a beloved colleague, as you heard uh, from Dean Richardson. Uh, in sum, he has all the attributes of someone who deservingly receives the William Prosser Award. So congratulations. <laughs> class, I always begin with a joke. <laughs> and of course, I have to share it with all of you. So uh, I ask students to give me a definition of torts. After they come up with some sort of answer, I tell them that they're missing something important. Uh, and I then read from the dictionary, and one definition of a tort, I point out to them, is a rich and sweet tort, a sweet dessert, containing little or no flour, usually made with eggs and ground nuts. In other words, I point out, torts is a piece of cake. <laughs> so this is actually a reproduction of a lovely needlepoint my daughter recently made for me. But I do always begin with this terrible joke. But the point of the joke is that actually, um, torts is not a, a piece of cake, as all of you perfectly well understand. 
Um, it's deceptively simple as a subject. Um, and there are three broad, broad categories of torts, uh, true, intentional torts, which you might think of as the most culpable conduct, negligence, which seems to involve less culpable conduct, strict liability, which seems to involve merely the allocation of losses. That's sort of the simple view. But my work on the restatement of intentional torts uh, and the work of many of you uh, 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 that's informed my work uh, illustrates that tort doctrine really can't be boiled down to these minimal ingredients, to stick with a <laughs> culinary metaphor for a minute. Um, uh, different conceptions of reasonableness uh, have a role uh, throughout tort law. Uh, so think about the reasonable person test of negligence. That's one sense of reasonableness. Think about the reasonable expectations test of strict liability. Uh, that's a quite different sense of reasonableness. Think about the reasonable sense of dignity test that's part of the traditional definition of offensive battery. Yet another sense of reasonableness. And at the same time, intentional torts, which might seem to involve a high level of culpability, uh, they all seem to involve some uh, element of strict liability as well. And one example would be uh, even reasonable mistakes of law about what tort law requires of you are not a def uh, almost never a defense in tort law, even for strict liability torts. So when we teach tort doctrine and write about it, it's a great challenge, but a very rewarding challenge, to identify these complexities and to see whether they can be justified. Not exactly a piece of cake, I'm afraid. Uh, and my second reflection is about the community of tort scholars. Uh, when I attended my first ALS meeting uh, as a nervous junior scholar, I just published my first torts article about assumption of risk. And Professor David Owens was chairing the torts section at that time, and he happened to mention some new scholarship that he'd run across that he found intriguing. Well, very lucky for me, he mentioned my article, and it was a wonderful way of beginning to make connections to other torts scholars. Over my career, I've tried uh, to emulate his example by reaching out to other scholars, especially those who are new to the field, and I've been very grateful to see how many tort scholars have contributed, uh, not only to uh, torts uh, scholarship generally, but to the restatement of torts projects that have been going on for several decades now, including the one for which I'm the chief reporter. And they do so not for personal prestige or attention, but simply to improve the law. Uh, this is an exciting time to be a tort scholar. Uh, when I began teaching, law and economics was the new kid in town. Uh, now we have important work in behavioral law and economics and empirical studies. And when I began, the fairness or uh, justice uh, branch of tort theory was pretty much limited to corrective justice. But uh, now we have many new perspectives, civil recourse theory, expressive theory, the new doctrinalism, uh, distributive justice, and there's been a, a flourishing of critical race and feminist scholarship that's taking towards uh, a, a doctrine very seriously and has been extremely helpful. In short, we senior scholars have an obligation to reach out and share what we know with junior scholars, but we also have a great deal to learn from you, too. So with that, I just want to say thank you once again for this award, which I will always treasure. Thank you.